Hey there folks, today we are back with an exciting video. It's God versus the Devil himself. The Marvel comics have a rich history of vampires running amok doing their business, with the hints that a new Blade movie might be in the works. It is time to refresh our knowledge about vampires in the Marvel Universe, and some of the really nasty fights they got into. Vampirism has been explored pretty well in the Marvel comics, with major vampire characters getting enough backstory, and some even attaining mythic status. Now. It is to be maintained here that Marvel sought inspiration for many of their vampire characters from other popular works of fiction. Nevertheless, they did come up with pretty novel and neat lore for major vampire characters. Some of them include Varnay, the first official vampire of the Marvel Universe, and arguably the deadliest vampire to ever exist, and of course, Count Dracula. Bram Stoker's work is as legendary as the myth of Dracula himself, and imagine that Dracula in the Marvel Universe alongside the X-Men and the Avenger. It is a total recipe for thrill. So, without further ado, let us delve into today's video, where we talk about that one time Dracula got into a fight with none other than the God of Thunder, Thor. Yes, you heard that right. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How did Dracula come into the Marvel Universe. Bit of trivia here. The Comic Code's authority was in place to prevent vampires from being used in comic books until the 1970s. After these restrictions eased, Marvel was quick to bring vampire lore into its universe, starting with Varnay, of course. Varnay's character by itself is incredibly interesting, especially every time he is reincarnated. However, that's a story for another day. For now, we will be looking into how Dracula came across this ingenious idea to turn a goddess. And well, things did not sit well with Thor. We know that Dracula, the Lord of the Darkness, was a Romanian ruler who was turned into a vampire after visions from none other than Varnay, and a lot of circumstances made him turn to the dark side. In fact, Varnay was looking for an heir to continue his reign of terror over mankind. When he came across the still human Vlad, Varnay sent a servant of his named Nimrod to challenge the newly turned vampire Dracula, who defeated Nimrod with very little effort. This event sealed his fate as the Lord of the Darkness, and good old Varnay unalived himself, soon after by walking out in the sun, satisfied that he had found a powerful heir. Marvel introduced Dracula for the first time in The Tomb of Dracula, 1972, written by Jerry Conway, and illustrated by Gene Colan. Following this, Marv Wolfman took over the writing for this issue, and introduced a lot of other vampire characters into Marvel, such as Blade, Hannibal King, and Lilith who happens to be Dracula's daughter. That being said, Dracula is yet to make his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not a lot of Marvel's mainstream superheroes frequently make their way into Dracula's comic issues either, which usually gives most fans the impression that Dracula has not crossed paths with most of the big names in Marvel. And that is where they are wrong, because boy oh boy, Dracula is one bloodthirsty menace who has fought not just one or two, but quite a few of Marvel's biggest superheroes. Some of these include Spider-Man, the X-Men, Doctor Strange, and Thor. Mind you, Dracula kind of got the upper hand in most of these fights initially, but immortality does not necessarily come with luck, or great intelligence for that matter. Now for the matter at hand, let us see why and how the Lord of the Darkness managed to irk the God of Thunder, and how they fought each other. How did Thor run into Dracula? Marvel's Dracula is a bit of a cocky scatterbrain, although he is still terrifying. He mostly goes around the world trying to get his dark schemes to work, encounters a superhero here and there, and picks up a fight, or, and this is my personal favorite, simply dies only to have someone or the other bring him back to life. He calls everyone a fool with the kind of disdain that you only develop after having been alive for over a hundred years. So in the true sense, Dracula's adventures in Marvel are far from being all haunted and dark and bloody. They're mostly just funny and a little exhausting. That does not make them boring though. As is evident during the time all was relatively fine, and Thor used to have a human alter ego named Donald Blake. This guy became the prime suspect in a murder investigation, which prompted Thor and Lady Sif to come down to Earth from Asgard and try to clear his name. The victim was none other than Jane Foster, who was Thor's original love interest. Now this part here is painstakingly dragged out, so try to keep up while I make this as short as I can. As Dr. Donald Blake, Thor had Jane Foster working under him, and the pair had developed romantic feelings for each other. So much so, 
that Thor had revealed his true nature to Jane. He had also brought her to Asgard to be made immortal. But since she was unworthy, Odin had wiped her memories and sent her back to Earth. She had no memories of Donald Blake anymore, but when she fell ill, she called for Thor, who gave her back her memories. Goddess Sif, who was also in love with Thor, tried reviving Jane's health by absorbing her soul to heal her, but this did not work as well. As a result, Jane sort of just vanished from existence, and Donald Blake was held responsible. To clear Donald's name, Thor went back to New York to try and get help from the Avengers, leaving Sif in Chicago, where a shady cult was trying to bring none other than the Lord of Darkness himself back to life. As Dracula comes back, he vows to bring humanity to his feet and goes out in search of fresh blood. During this time, he comes across Thor and Sif and gets some very intriguing vibes from the latter, but he decides to go his way and attacks a couple of people, one of who turns into a vampire and is then defeated by Thor using the Mjolnir. And here comes an interesting discovery, since vampires are weak against religious symbols, and Thor technically is a god, his hammer is a religious item and can kill vampires. While Thor goes out to solve the mystery of Jane's disappearance, Dracula sneaks into his and Lady Sif's apartment and bites the latter, turning the Asgardian into a vampire. Sif declares her love and loyalty for Dracula, who is overjoyed at the prospect of having turned a literal goddess and she also seems to have some sort of amnesiac reaction to his bite, where she forgets pretty much everything about herself. Thor decides to bring in the big guns by calling for Doctor Strange, who realizes the condition Sif is in and immediately informs Thor. Over the years, Doctor Strange has had run-ins with Dracula, so he knows that the Feng guy is up to no good. Thor comes back to find and save Sif, only to find their hotel room empty. Dracula, on the other hand, is thrilled because Sif's Asgardian blood has been giving him enhanced powers, decides to go to the opera with her. He is also a little concerned about how quickly Sif's turning into a vampire, since usually humans usually take a while, but he chalks it up to her being a goddess. Thor finds out about this from one of the cult members, who had helped Dracula rise again, and bursts into the opera, challenging Dracula to fight him. Sif does not seem to recognize Thor, which infuriates him, as she is still under Dracula's control he asks her to stay where she is and swoops down in his bat form to defeat Thor once and for all. The Asgardian blood gave him a lot of confidence, and the fierce battle between God and the Devil begins. Can Dracula drain the Asgardian? A surprisingly bloody matchup. Thor and Dracula begin fighting inside the opera theater itself, and Thor aims his hammer at Dracula. Since it killed the other vampires, it would probably kill him in one go too, right? Well, Thor was unfortunately wrong. The hammer did not inflict much damage on Dracula, who simply laughed it off, calling it a plaything. And here's the cheek Marvel's Dracula boasts of, calling Mjolnir a plaything. Dracula says that Thor's hammer is simply a petty relic of a forgotten religion, and thus, it has no effect on Dracula at all. However, it still manages to completely crush the opera theater, and Thor holds the ceiling so that the humans inside can rush out. Once everyone escapes safely, Thor flies out to see Dracula waiting for him. And this time, his delightful insult to Thor is adult. I don't think even Loki has ever shown this much disrespect to Thor. Haha. <laughs> Back to the fight. Thor attempts to summon a storm. But hey, hey, remember how Dracula can also manipulate the weather? Their powers almost cancel out each other. But once they both summon the storm, it seems to come crashing down on everything except the two masters themselves. It really seems to be a futile battle of wills. Since Dracula can turn himself into the mist, or have his vermin servants attack Thor. That is, until Thor strikes Dracula with lightning, which seems to be the first and only thing that weakens the vampire slightly. Trying to deliver the final blow, Thor says that killing Dracula will not be a defilement of his vow to not take life, since Dracula is already dead. Just before he can deliver the blow, Dracula vanishes from the scene, leaving the God of Thunder puzzled beyond his wits. Doctor Strange comes to visit Thor in a thought image, projected by him, and explains Dracula's sudden disappearance. He says that a different cult from New York had summoned Dracula to them, and the vampire is now off bothering some other superhero. For now though, Chicago is safe, and Thor no longer needs to worry about Dracula since Doctor Strange himself will be keeping an eye on the vampire's activities. Strange also explains that while Sif's blood initially gave Dracula a surge in power, it ultimately weakened him, and did not, in fact, make him immortal. It is implied that Dracula will have a showdown with Doctor Strange next. Before he can ask about Sif, Thor watches Doctor Strange disappear, and just then, 
Sif comes up to the top of the building. At first, it looks like she is still in her vampire form, poised to attack Thor, then and there. However, it turns out she is just in a haze after being freed from Dracula's control, and she rushes into Thor's arm. Thor, who was earlier thinking the worst, is now relieved to see that Sif's body had rejected Dracula's vampire poison. Just as the vampire's blood had rejected Sif's Asgardian blood, they share a passionate embrace, and Thor informs her that Doctor Strange has located the rune staff they were looking for throughout the issue, which could explain Jane's disappearance. Located on Camo Thorn's planet, far away in a corner of the universe, the two lovebirds fly off in search of the rune staff, while the weakened Dracula is somewhere in New York, being monitored by the Sorcerer Supreme. Is Dracula ready for round two? I say this in the most respectable way possible. Dracula really does not stand much of a chance against Thor. Granted, he somehow had managed to enthrall Sif, but that was only because Sif was sleepy and had assumed it was Thor who wanted in. The comic references the legend that a vampire must be invited in or asked to enter. Otherwise, it cannot come inside. A fact that is shown when Sif clearly says enter to Dracula, thinking that he is Thor. A lot of fans actually say that if Sif was in her correct element, she herself could have been enough to take out Dracula without any interference from Thor. Well, we cannot know that for sure, since that did not happen. But the Lady Sif is, notwithstanding, one of Asgard's mightiest warriors, so who knows? The bottom line is that Dracula now knows that he would stand on the losing side against Thor, and maybe even Doctor Strange. While Thor's hammer does not cause him any pain initially, his power to summon thunder sure does a number on the vampire. Had it not been for the absolute right timing interference by the cult located in New York, Dracula could have very well been killed by Thor. In fact, Dracula himself seems to have understood that he stands very little chance against the God of Thunder, because during his encounter with Doctor Strange, later, after the vampire is brazen enough to actually attack the Avengers mansion to steal the Darkhold, as soon as he gets wind of the Avengers calling reinforcements, i.e. a possible comeback of Thor, he leaves immediately. Marvelous Verdict That was it folks. The highly anticipated fight between Thor and Dracula actually ended in a pretty anticlimactic way, if you ask me but at least it was proved definitely that Thor could easily overpower Dracula in a fight. What's more, we also learned that while Asgardian blood can momentarily improve the vampire's reflexes and make him stronger than ever, it will ultimately be canceled out by his own blood. The reason is not explained in the issue, but I think this is certainly something Marvel will look into in the future. Moreover, we also learned that Thor's hammer, while not inflicting much damage on Dracula himself, can be a very useful weapon against other vampires since it technically is a religious symbol, owing to Thor's god status. If you have not checked out the issue of Doctor Strange where the showdown with Dracula happens, you're missing out. Just like with Thor, Dracula initially gains the upper hand with Doctor Strange as well. But I mean, come on. The guy is the Sorcerer Supreme and, well, Dracula, for all his splendor, is simply a really cheeky vampire. No offense intended. I think Marvel's portrayal of Dracula, at least in reference to Thor, is more of a troublemaker than an actual antagonist, because there were very few instances where Dracula's image actually invoked some sort of fear. Mostly, it was just a lot of overconfidence on his part that made fans agree that Dracula's image in the Marvel fandom is not as terrifying as it is in the other legends. Nevertheless, the fight between Dracula and Thor was pretty entertaining, especially the part where they almost ended up in a stalemate due to having pretty similar powers. Thank you, folks. Let us know in the comments what you think about this epic showdown. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone!